There you go. Now I see you live. Okay, here we are. Well, um, David, how are you, man? It's good to see you. Michael, it's good to see you too, virtually. I know. We should be I, at NAM right now. I know. I think last time I saw you was at NAM. Yeah, it was. Yeah. W was it last year or two years ago that we shared a, an Airbnb? I can't remember. I think it was two, two years ago. Two years ago. Yep. Two, two years ago. Um, <sighs> Yeah, Time that, was, flies. that was very far away from the convention center. When we were booking <laughs> it, we were looking at it on the map, <laughs> yeah. and we were like, you know, it doesn't seem that far. It's just like two blocks. It's like a square, and little little do we know that each block is like a mile. <laughs> yeah, we got very well acquainted with, um, what is that app where, I don't use it here. Uber. You know, where you get, yeah, Uber and stuff like that. Yes, yes. Well, talk about, talk about an app that just was... <laughs> screaming and then just got destroyed because of COVID. One of the biggest casualties. I mean, we, it, it, I'm in Baltimore, for those that don't know. Uh, and I mean, I, I tried to catch an Uber like last week. I pulled up my app. There's just no cars. It's just mm. goose egg, just nothing. Like, you, you can't have it anymore. Like, who's, uh, who's letting strangers in their cars right now? Right, yeah. Oh, crazy times. Yeah, it um, is crazy. For everyone watching, a bit, I'm sure people know you, but maybe not. And if not, well, first of all, Michael and I, we, we met at GetCon a mm -hmm. few years back um, in Germany. And ever since, your channel has exploded. Congratulations on that. Thank you, man. It is, um, you know, it's only taken eight years. But uh, right. people don't see that, right? They, they just think no, you're they, a, yeah. <laughs> it, no, they don't see that. It's, well, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it, you know, we all, uh, you and I uh, both committed to being online educators mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to looking for bigger stages and touring and all that. We chose to use our skill sets uh, to teach online. We love to teach and the internet gave us a whole new thing. Yeah. And so I've been doing that, you know, since 2013. You've been doing it even longer, I believe. A little bit before that, yeah. But, you know, the first years were just kind of like testing the waters. But Hey, there's someone from Germany. There's Kelly. Kelly, how are Kelly, you? Kelly, hey. See, so, uh, click Kelly's name. All right. Bam, there we go. See? And, and I love the new look, Kelly. You lost like 30 years with uh, the shave there. It's, Not, all the hot, it's all the hot sauce. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, um, yeah, so, so we've each been doing it a long time. Mm -hmm. But I never got any traction on YouTube for the first seven years and 500 videos you know it just it takes a long so i say all that to say i had found my lane as an educator but as far as like on youtube yeah it it, it took so long to figure out my own voice and my own kind of style and shtick if you will yeah because you know? because i spent so many years trying to be like you trying mm -hmm. to be like Marty, trying to be like Rick, you know, trying to do yeah. that whole thing. And I think we all know that like at the end of the day, what works is when you just go all in and being like you. And it, 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 and it took me almost eight years to figure that out. <laughs> well, it takes, well, you know, the, you're absolutely right, but there's this other aspect where when you're presenting content on YouTube, it, it can't be all of you. It's, yeah. it's gotta be an aspect of you. So there's different angles to try and what makes you comfortable and, and then you can pivot also. So yeah, many times, it's, it's, many, uh, many times. It's, it's an interesting job that we have for sure. It's, it, this is one of the, one of the <laughs> favorite reasons uh, that I like to do these things when I get to talk to people like you because my whole family, even mm -hmm. my wife, is like, what do you do? Yeah. Like, 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 oh, he teaches guitar online. They're yeah. Like, and, and, what exactly does that mean? Like, like, it's so rare to talk to someone that actually supports a family, does it for a living, and they've been doing it full time. Because there's like, I mean, how many of us do you think there are out there in the world that fit in that category? I, I don't know. I have no, probably not many. I, I haven't met many besides you and, you know, a handful of friends that I meet at events. But like, like, like when we go to Nam mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, we have that one hangout, that one night by the pool. I mean, that's probably like 50 people. Yeah. And then I'm sure there's probably like another 50 people that don't go to NAM, and that's like probably it. <laughs> yeah. No, you're so right. <laughs> it's something like that. So, okay, so tell me, because I'm always stumped on this, when, when you're meeting someone, a friend or whatever, not a friend, because they probably know, but 
what do you say you do? You, I usually dumb it down. I teach guitar, but that's not really what I do. Yeah, I mean, it's I, an aspect. What do you, what's your response? So I say, you know when you would buy an educational DVD or a VHS? Mm -hmm. I make the digital version of that for guitar. That's good, yeah. That's, that's what I do. That's good. I'm yeah. going to use that now. Yeah, it's, because because if, if you say YouTuber, they're like, mm -hmm. YouTube. Right. You know, if, they, yeah. if they say, you know, you teach guitar online, they're like, what's that mean? If you say, mm -hmm. oh, I run an educational website, they're like, what does that mean? You yeah. Know? And so, like, you, I, I find it works best when you compare it to something they already know, because they're like, oh, yeah, people used to buy books or mm -hmm. DVDs. It's yep. like, yeah, I just, now I just make those and they just people just stream it. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. Yeah. I'll use that. Bald right. and bearded, how are you? Good to see you, man. Some yeah, names we here see I some, recognize. some activities here. That's great. Good to see everyone. Um, I do have a, I have a question for you. So sure. as educators, we spend a lot of time educating, producing content, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes not, depending on the thing. Um, I find it difficult sometimes to enjoy working on my own stuff. I, I love teaching, but there's this, uh, the, the creative part of me, <clears throat> maybe not the creative, because you can add some creativity to your lessons, but the, the artist, I'll, we'll call it the artist in us. <clears throat> for me, it's not always fulfilled. And I go yeah. back and forth, right? Um, first of all, do you, um, are you able now with your job to kind of like cater both sides, the educator part and then the creative part of you too. Are you able to balance those and what are your tips? And I'm just kind of curious. I'm, I, no, I'm not very able to balance okay. it. Okay, I'm not either. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, in, you know, it, life's about decisions and it's about choices and you, have to, and you have to deal with what you've chosen to do. And when you choose, like we both have, um, to educate at scale, Mm -hmm. So people all over the world, um, and a lot of them, and we're very blessed to do so. I mean, you know how it is. I mean, yeah. your your inbox is a dumpster fire. You know, yeah. like every every time every time you sit at the desk. I mean, there's there's a hundred different things you have to do, and and these people are choosing to give you their hard earned money and attention, um, and so you have to prioritize them. Uh, because you've chosen this is what you've chosen to do with your life mm -hmm. and and by the time you've gotten through all the i must do things usually it's the day is over yeah you know like yeah. like like so so i'm i'm incredibly envious of uh our mutual friend uh i i, I think yeah you got you got to meet each other at nam last year um brian Sherrill, who mm -hmm. who he his thing is he makes a piece of music every week and teaches that thing he makes. Now that is something I think about a lot because that is a great, a great way to balance the two. But for people like, like you and I who, mm -hmm. who make courses and make YouTube videos and then answer all the emails and talk to all the people in mm -hmm. between and, and do all the things and the editing and all the things that we do, I mean, there's just really not that much time. And we have kids, so it's just like- Right, it's, yeah. It's, that adds a whole, whole so new no, twist. No, yeah. you, you, are, you are not alone. This is, um, it's, it's difficult. It is, really, mm -hmm. it is really difficult. But I think, I'm glad you asked that question because I think about it every single day. I do too. Um, and I, I, I kind of wonder if you're, and I think I've seen a few comments here. Some people know you, but some people don't. But you have this uh, awesome series um, guitar teacher reacts. Yes, or, I can't remember what you call it. Yes, yes. Which is awesome, and we should uh, leave the link. Would you leave the link there? I'll, I'll make sure to publish it while, while I talk to your channel. Sure. But um, I, I wonder if that has helped your um, your both of your minds. The your teaching through the thing, but you're also you're being creative because you're you're listening to to things, concepts, and ideas from whatever artist you're listening to, and then reusing that. I, I don't really have a question. It's more of an observation. It seems to be like a good medium to kind of blend both of these aspects together. Yeah, I mean, it, it, 
it is it is something I so for those that aren't familiar with 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 my channel, I, 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 if you're just tuning in, I made YouTube videos forever. But ar around last fall, I started making these React videos, um, and and it it does really it 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 actually stemmed from me being burnt out. Yeah, and, and put the guitar down for a while uh, in mid 2019. And I got re-inspired because uh, well, a bunch of things happened, but mainly I went to see Mare play with Dead and Company, mm -hmm. and and because my wife was a big Mare fan, and and uh, I I've always liked Mare, but I never like like got hooked, and I've always known about like the Dead and that music, but I never like got hooked. Um, and I'm 37, so I'm a little late to the party, but I was as I was going there, I was like, all right, what? What what is this guy doing that um like why is he taking 20 dates a summer off his headline sold out arena tour to be a paid hired gun in a cover band and play someone else's tunes? I was like I I don't like all right, I'll go. I got to see what the hell this is all about. And so I went and saw him and he sounded nothing like uh, the stuff I had seen him before when my wife and I had seen him on a solo tour. Mm -hmm. And he and he seemed happier than I, like I'd ever seen him be on stage. And his tone, uh, the, like from the actual guitars to the lines and the, the melodies and everything, was like a completely different approach. It wasn't mm. like the bluesy thing that whatever. And I was just like, you know what? There's something here. And the audience was just like eating it up. Like that, like eating it up, and it was none of the typical people, obviously, that you saw at his normal shows. And yeah. Like, and I was like, I was like, okay, I got to figure out what's going on here. And I went home, and huh. I was learning some of these tunes. And I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna put the camera on, and I'm gonna show people how I learned something completely new. So I so like a student comes into your room, mm -hmm. you have 30 minutes. They say, I want to learn blank. You pull it up on YouTube, you know, you're sitting here, they're sitting there, you know, yeah. and and you get the broad strokes, these are the changes, these are whatever, you dig in what you can, 30 minutes, hit it and quit it and it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. And and I just did a couple of those with uh, some dead songs and um, it just popped, you know, it just, it just popped. Um, and, and I just started calling them Reacts because yeah. React is a thing on YouTube. And they, totally. sure, they sure shit weren't lessons because I didn't learn them first. You mm -hmm. know, because I don't get everything right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's um, the appeal, I think. And I do think that's the appeal. Mm -hmm. And so after seven years or whatever on YouTube and being burnt out of making 500 some videos that didn't work, I, I went to a show, got inspired, came back decided to put the camera on and me learning stuff. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, that is the thing that, um, that is the, the singular voice that I had been looking for after, mm -hmm. uh, after all that. It was a very interesting thing. So I, I feel very blessed now to be um, building this community in this way. It's a very cool thing. So how, how much do you uh, plan those videos besides knowing maybe the artist that you're gonna cover? Is there a lot of prep going into it? No. Okay. Um, and I think that's another one of the appeals there. I think it's another reason. No, no, mine are, my, so when I first started doing these, I got plenty, plenty of people saying, oh, bull, you, you pre-listened <laughs> pre to these. This is all, this is whatever. This is a bunch of crap. You're not being authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and then over time that started to dissipate because people started to see that, you know, it was, see the progression and whatever. And, and honestly, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I have four kids and it's COVID and they can't go to school. Um, and since you can only film when they're asleep or gone and they mm -hmm. don't ever go anywhere, I can really only film in like these little bursts, you yeah. know? And so, as much as I would like to make really more thought out content that I edit, a lot of the times 
I just go on my website. I made a, a whole dedicated page on my website for React requests. That's kind mm-hmm. of like a thank you to people that allow yeah. me to be their teacher. And I go down it. I pick it randomly. I put on the camera. I, I, you know, do the do the video. Mm-hmm. I sometimes trim the edges. I, t- I usually don't. Yeah. And then I, I just upload it. And then I go back to changing diapers, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's it's like it's it's kind of like that. I I think there is a, a craving, <laughs> at least for me, when I'm watching YouTube videos. There is, of course, the overly produced videos, and you know, yeah, th- those yeah. are cool. But I think there's this craving overall for uh, genuine, um, uh, genuine people, and and we're kind of all in the same boat. Like there's yeah. guitar, we might know a few things, and we're sharing, but we're getting so much from students too. It's a common journey, and I think that's what people like. That's what I like when I'm watching your videos. I'm like, yeah, that's we're on the same boat. We're on the same journey. It's it's absolutely true, um, and I think that. I think that, like like the way you do it like with your live camera switching like it's not yeah. like it's it's not like it's edited like it's very clear that this is like a one take performance kind of approach. Yeah. It's very it people like that authenticity especially mm-hmm. uh, when at the end of the day we're trying to be educators and like right. the biggest the biggest hurdle that people have is they think what they see is unattainable. And mm-hmm. so and so when they see people that are for all intents and purposes live you know um and if you mess up you just muscle through and you even say oh i kind of messed that up you know like you both do yeah that that shows them that they that this isn't some mythical unattainable thing it shows Mm -hmm. them that that we that, that this is the pursuit of a lifetime it is, yeah, yeah, and 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 that and that this is just a capturing of that thirty minutes, and mm-hmm. that you can do this too. I really think that um, it is very significant for people uh, because it's so easy to to watch the overproduced, you know, super uh, just just over the top content from these incredible players that, yeah. that, frankly, I'll never be able to play like. And you watch it, and you're just like. I mean, okay, like I, I don't even feel like I can do that. I watch mm-hmm. the I watch the Andy Jameses of the world and like the, and like the, you know the Quails and like all those people and it's just like, I don't get the feeling that that's very attainable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And they're incredible players and they're incredible content creators, but I have found and I know like you have too that that being live for all intents and purposes Mm -hmm. and not relying on those edits and leaving in mistakes actually helps students feel comfortable and relate to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Real quick, thank you, Fisher, for the, you didn't have to do that, but thanks so much, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Have you had- Mike Bradley's on here too. Oh, Mike, hey Mike, how's it going, man? So that's another, Another guy who understands exactly what we're talking about here. Yes, very much um, so. Uh, Mike, if you're still there and if you want to join us, just uh, send me um, a Facebook message and I'll, I'll let you in if you'd like. It'll be fun. I think I can do that, right? How many yeah. guests can we have here? You can have 10, I believe. Okay, all right. All right. Well, Mike, if you want to come, just let yeah, us know. Some, sometimes if I'm feeling real brave, I just I drop it straight in the comments and, okay. just, let, and just let anybody on YouTube yeah. jump in. Well, we might have to do that at some point. Now that I'm taking that as a challenge. Uh, well, it is definitely a challenge. We might have to do that. If anyone has any questions, please feel free yeah. to interrupt here. Have, so, has there been a, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna ask you how, how it's been for you, um, you know, this past year in, in COVID. I know that, you know, we, we're both fortunate enough to uh, not have to, you know, go into a job it doesn't really mm-hmm. impact us but i'm just wondering yeah what it's been like for you over there man because i know you have kids or schools open is yeah it, is it um so schools just reopened i have two kids and one of them is in first grade and uh it just opened yesterday so she's going yeah. we'll see what happens and we have a, a four-year-old but yeah it's been it's been a challenge it's been a ch- for us parents and for them too they need their friends. They need to run around and, you know, kind of feeling uh, cooped in a little bit. Are yours, are yours like mine, like 
kind of addicted to YouTube and then you feel like and tech and you kind of say, hey, you have to get off tech and like, but that's what you do for a living. And you're well, just like, mm. uh, that's yes, absolutely. <laughs> and that's I don't know about your kids, but our kids, especially one of them, I won't say who <laughs> one of our kids. <laughs> If they watch, you know, more than an hour or two of TV, they go nuts after that. We turn it off and it's like chaos. Oh, dude. So you have to limit that, but it's hard when, you know, there's not much else to do around. Yeah. Um, it's a good point, though. Yeah, we, we try to limit tech in the house, yeah. but that's what I do for a living. So <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> I, I know. Well, my kids like to remind me of that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your like kids are a little it. older, I think, though. How old are your kids? Uh, my, my oldest is 10. So okay. 10, 10, 7, 4, and 9 months, we had a COVID baby. Yeah, okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's, uh, it's tough, but we've learned, or I've learned a lot about them and myself and yeah. all of that. So, so it's good. It's been overall, I'm seeing the, the light, at, you know, amongst the craziness. There's some good that came out of it. So I, that's cool. I, I hope so. Are your, um, uh, are, your, are your ski mountains open, your resorts open out there? I don't know. I don't know. Do you I'm, ski or snowboard? When I can, it's rare. I probably yeah, skied oh, yeah. once in the last five years or so. Yeah. So I didn't really grow up uh, around mountains. You know, I grew up in South France where, yeah, yeah you can go ski, but you have to make it, you know, a planned trip. And so, no, do you ski? Yes. And I, I haven't, I was supposed to go to Colorado last year and then COVID. Um, yeah. And, and so it's been a couple years. We took my kids to Utah uh, two years ago. And we got like the storm of a century. It was like a hundred year storm. It was unbelievable. Wow. It was just so much snow. So we're trying to get them back this year. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we're so hesitant to book anything because COVID. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. And it's, it's so, and it's so much money and it takes so much planning. But we're like, okay, they're, they're in virtual school so we could go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like we could book it and then it not happen, you know? So yeah. it's, it's just a, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just keep playing guitar. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, um, is there anything uh, maybe new or, or old that is exciting you now on guitar that you might have, if you have time to work on stuff, maybe there's like a, or something you learned from a video or just teach me something. Just give me something. <laughs> yeah, teach you something. All right. Well, I mean, so I've been on a hunt for the middle uh, you know, or for, for, for the inside, I should say, uh, you know, for, for a good year or so now. So it's just been, you know, there's been a phase of my life where, you know, I was trying to go faster and play more complicated. And there's been a, and there's been a phase of my life where, um, you know, I just wanted to play louder and mm -hmm. I had a bluegrass phase and that, but like these days, I mean, I just, and the courses that I, I try to focus on, I really try to boil things down into very, very simple melodic ideas, just connecting chords with melodies. Yeah. And so, like, one of the things that, that I've been kind of teaching these days, or working, let's see, I'm going to spin like, let's see if I can do this, look at that. All right. <laughs> you need an Arnoldist chair, man. Okay, this is a separate situation conversation. We'll get back. Okay, yeah. You you you, you have a you have a chair recommendation because I am I I I hate all of my chairs. Yeah. And, and I and I talked to Tim Pierce, and he's like he's like I've hated all my chairs. I found the best chair. It's changed my whole life. But it's like eighteen or nineteen hundred dollars. Oh gosh. Yeah. And, and I'm like and I'm like I'm like okay no 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 let's yeah. let's tr let's try again. So. You have a good chair? Uh, it's, it's decent. It's got arms that, you know, go up and down. Everybody's asking me about this chair. I've had it for maybe five years. Yeah, see, the arms are huge. See, that's why I'm... That's saying. huge, right? Yeah. 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 This, is pro this is like a $100 chair that I got at American Furniture Warehouse. Yeah. And I keep seeing them over there, so it's cheap. It works. Well, what was the Nautilus or whatever you said chair you were talking about? The what? You used so some word you're like you got to get a nautilus oh chair. Uh, an armless armless armless, armless. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah or something like that yeah, yeah. sorry yeah anyways no, no yeah. worries chairs are important <laughs> chairs are important so I, don't, so I don't have my looper but like i like to do things 
like these days, like when I'm teaching or just jamming, I like to find just singular harmonic roadmaps for connecting chords. So if I'm at like an A and a G, right? Like. Mm -hmm. But then, so like do it roots. And just trying to take whatever progression I get, mm -hmm. um, and just trying to be able to make try to make a road map of just uh, your simple like three spot melody jump from the root, three spot melody jump from the third, yeah. three spot melody jump from the fifth, and just really just try to think like a voice would, mm -hmm. um, yep. and not worry about scale and not worry about all that stuff. It's just like okay, what are the chords? So like if I'm in, if, if I do that same thing, like if I'm in A and G, and I start on the root, A, or here. Mm -hmm. so, so I got a one, two, three. A, B, C sharp. One, two, a major third. And then I go to G, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm in, I'm right, in yeah. A mixolydian or G lydian now or anything mm -hmm. like that. I'm just thinking, okay, what are my one, two, threes from that root? that stay in key. And it's the same jump. And then I do the same thing from the third. You know, like what is, you know, if I'm in, you know. You know. So that right there is, you know. But then when I go down to G, it's no longer. It's. Right, yeah, it's, yeah. So I'm finding the common tone between the two. Mm -hmm. And so whatever song I'm in, it could have two chords or three chords or four chords. I'm just trying to make my own little personal melodic roadmap from each of the from each of the chord tones and just focus on making melodies and mm -hmm. connecting those. Like no scales, no yeah. patterns. Yeah. That's it. I think that's well, first of all, that's what people resonate with. Most yeah. people. And then I, I love that kind of exercise because you're really working, even even though you might not realize it, you're really working on some theory, some techniques, some yeah. uh, ear training, all of that together, but you don't really know it. And those are just yeah. tools anyways to get to uh, an efficient way of uh, speaking music, right? Yeah. Those are just things. Um, they, I remember when I, I was in uh, music school oh, years and years and years ago, but there was this one exercise in a guitar class, an assignment, and the assi I think it was on a blues, just three chords. But the assignment was to create a, a solo, so write, write something, not really improv, but write a solo or a theme or whatever over those chords. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to present that to the class, and the class would have to know the chords without you playing the chords. It's everything. Which is everything, right? Um, if you could do that, then you manage to do exactly what you were showing those, like targeting certain notes of the chords. Yeah. And even if you don't know those intervals that you're targeting, you could do it. It's good to yeah. know because it's the shortcut, right? It'll, it'll speed up the thought process. But I think that's awesome. That's a great, great reminder yeah. for everyone. Yeah, it, it, and, it's, and it's useful for every genre. I mean, you'll, Absolutely, yeah. you'll, you'll find that. So what I always tell my students is, again, I've been in many phases of my life. You know, there, there, I'm sure there will be many more. Mm -hmm. But right now, <clears throat> I, I really try to get to the essence of why things get stuck in people's heads. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What, what makes the earworm? Oh, mm -hmm. thanks, Silent Bob. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and it's usually extremely simple. It's something people can hum, right? Mm -hmm. I, I know like your big thing, like when you, uh, or one of your big things is like 
okay, can you hear it in your head first? And then yeah. let's tr- and then let's try to get it out. Mm-hmm. So it's like things that get stuck in people's head are usually, you know, n- not sweep arpeggios, right? right. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're, they're usually single singing note lines, mm-hmm. um, and, and so it's that not just trying to play things for musicians, but for t- that what makes a hook a hook for someone who doesn't even play. Yep. And and usually, I. Uh, you can find those things if you just do what we're what we're talking about. Just what are the notes in that chord? Mm-hmm. What are the notes in the next chord? Let's connect them yep. and make mel- Try to make simple melodies where you can hear each one. Mm-hmm. And and so many of the most memorable things in music that I know are just simple like that. And yeah. So, I, so I've been just drilling down that for the past couple of years. Like it's just been my everything. And, you know, yeah, it's uh, a singer would do that pretty naturally. You play a chord progression and the singer will just la da da da. The first thing that comes to mind, typically, will follow those chords. Yeah. And that's Horn kind of the... players, too. Horn yeah. players, like, yeah. that's why guitarists get such a bad rap, you know? Yeah, yeah. Be- because for all these instruments that can't play two notes at a time, mm-hmm. you know, going chord tone to chord tone one note at a time is is is, is kind of like 101 you know it, it's 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 where you start you know for mm-hmm. all intents and purposes right yep and for us as guitar players we don't really start that way we start learning the full six note bar chord shapes and then we break it down into octave shapes and then scale shapes and arpeggios and, and all that but like for people that can only play one note at a time mm-hmm. you start Root of this chord to root of this chord. Third yeah. of this chord to third of that chord. Fifth of this chord to fifth of this chord. And it's just... And and so I so after going through all the craziness in school and everything, I'm trying to get back to that place, you know? And, I've, and I've, I'm learning... I love that. I, I just... Mm-hmm. I, just, I don't know. I, I think you and I are in a very similar, uh, similar spot in life um, with that musically. I, I think... I think the problem with guitar players, a lot of us, is that we start playing and then it sounds cool and quickly we, we take the guitar and we almost, uh, we almost make this piece of wood way more than it really is, which is just a tool, an instrument, yeah. as cool as it is. And, and then quickly there's this shift that often happens where we kind of uh, feel that all the music that comes out, the solos, whatever you call it, comes out from this. But that's really just the intermediate thing between you yeah. and yeah. the ears. Yeah. It's just a tool, right? And so if you, if, you re- if you put that guitar back where it should be, then anything you're working on, whether it's a lick, a skill, a technique, theory, whatever, really the end goal should not be to produce better music, but it should be just to learn how this tool works. Yeah. And then the music just comes from inside of you and and you can automatically bring it out. Just like when we're we're speaking a new language, first we have to um, have the idea, then maybe we translate it, and then it becomes natural, but we're not learning this list of vocabulary thinking that it's gonna allow us to speak or to uh, make up a piece of poetry, right? It, those are just tools, and I totally agree. That's I think why it's a mindset. I think oh, it, it is a mindset. That's mm-hmm. why I think you know it's so important uh, to try different tunings, play different instruments. Yeah, um, you know, I, it just it makes you think differently. Like you, 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 you pull something in open tuning or even a drop tuning, you're mm-hmm. immediately going to play something different because because you're not relying on your muscle memory you're like yeah, okay yeah all right it's just it's it's right back to the ear mm-hmm. um one other exercise that i like to do with with students uh, along these lines is practice audiation but going back and forth between letting your fingers lead and your ear lead so like let's say hmm. i'm so let's say i'm like a <laughs> So that would be like where I'm following my fingers. Mm. But then if I'm if I'm here, 
right where I hit the note first in my head, yeah, and then and yeah. then go and then go try to find it. Mm -hmm. That's the that's like the opposite. It's like two sides of the same coin. Yeah, and that's a, that's and good. that's a that's a very difficult thing to do mm -hmm. um, for me because like it's very hard for me to. I'm just not a natural singer. It's hard for me to hit pitch, um, but I find that that immediately breaks the mental thing because if you're sitting here, you know. You can, if, if you're thinking about your hand going up a whole step. Yes, it's hard for me. But but if I if I sing it first, if I mm -hmm. if it's in my head, and then I go try to find it, hundred percent, my fingers do things they haven't done before. Yeah, yeah, it, yes. It, and so that that to me, trying to connect the inner ear through audiation with those those two exercises. Is a is a, a huge tool. Very mm -hmm. difficult to do. Very very very. Uh, you're naked. It's very exposing. It is. Yeah, you do that in you know practicing home alone. Not not on a live thing, right? <laughs> no, not on a live stream, right? <laughs> no, but that's that's so good. And you know what I found is so that what we're talking about. I kind of realized that maybe five years ago. That's when I made the shift, yeah. and it was so freeing too of of the anxiety that I used to have picking up my guitar, you know, in a jam band or whatever it is, or Guitar Center. Yeah. Pick up the guitar, and as soon as you pick it up, 10,000 guitar players around you are watching you. It's not true, yeah. but that's in your mind. Yeah. But then if you switch that, you're like, all right, well, I, I don't care. What, what is coming out is not from this. It's really from here, from inside. Yeah. And I'm okay with that because you know, we're all unique and individual. It's just so, such a freeing thing, I think. And, totally agree. And people won't necessarily come to you and um, with this unhealthy, like, oh man, you're so good. I'm never going to be like that. It, they come to you with more appreciation, I think, for who you are and more inspiration for them to be who they want to be too. And I, I just totally love agree. that kind of thing. It's great. Yeah. Hey, BV, good to see you. It's one of the one of the, my friends and mods on my channel, BV Ninja. There. All right, BV, welcome. Is that the one? That's the one. Okay. That's the, that's the one and the only. Okay. Well, uh, so French, Francais aussi? Maybe. I believe so. But that's awesome. Nice to see you. And then we have uh, Rochester, New York in the house. So I used to live in a little suburb of hey, Rochester. Um, I got one of my guitars in House of Guitars, Peter, from uh, Rochester, New York. Are they still around, Peter? I'm curious. Is House Guitars still a thing? I hope so. Um, man, uh, I'm, I feel inspired. I, I feel inspired to, to keep developing those things. Um, yeah, it's, um, like I said, you know, it, it's one of those things like, uh, uh, like recording yourself or, or getting on stage or uploading a video. It's like, it's, it's an uncomfortable thing cause it's, it's very exposing. Mm -hmm. Um, but you find out immediately, you know, uh, what you need to work on and what you can nail and what is you know what what is very far away like it's it's one of those it's one of those honest mirrors and and uh you know committing to looking in the mirror is a hard thing but it's 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 everything mm -hmm. yeah let's go back to the youtube thing um, sure. I'm, I'm curious about your if it exists is there a typical work day for michael does that exist and if so what is it like so i am attempting to get to the adult place where I have a typical <laughs> work day. Like you, like you who got your own spot and you work out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, I, this is a new spot. Uh, I actually, I actually uh, rented a barn from a family friend uh, and the barn has no heater internet yet. And so this, this is a converted apartment in the barn. Okay. Um, and so I'm in here until I can figure out of the heat or until spring comes mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um but uh so i say all that to say that hopefully um this will this will i will have normal work days uh but for all intents and purposes um when i was in my house so all every single video you saw with all my stuff you know on the walls and in my little room um 
I would get my I would get my kids on their um, virtual thing by eight forty five a.m. Mm -hmm. and then usually there would be some there would be some random monotonous thing to do. Um, but typically I get up before I get up before the kids get up. I work out. Uh, that's like my quiet time in the morning. I try mm -hmm. to exercise. Um, and then make breakfast, get them on their devices in the morning, come downstairs. First two or three hours of the day are always student emails, customer support, people who can't remember their passwords, people that update their credit card information, all, yeah. all that. That is mm -hmm. always first priority because those are people yeah. that uh, give me my, <laughs> my career, my, my living. Mm -hmm. um, then I typically, uh, once I get through all the immediate stuff like that, if I need to do a video that day, which is most days. I shoot for about every other day um, to upload a video on YouTube uh, and then one a week for a, a standalone lesson on my website. Mm -hmm. um, usually what I do is before I turn the camera on, I do exercises. I do exercises every day. Uh, just finger exercises all the way to the point like where it burns, stretch it out. Like that's, I do that more than I practice scales or anything else like mm -hmm. that. It's, it's mostly that. Um, and then after that, I will, uh, I'll practice improvising to jam tracks. I'll pick a couple. Um, I usually do one, four, five, one, six, two fives, uh, you know, things that, things that are common that I can, you know, get my ear accustomed to hearing. And then generally speaking, when I, uh, you know, go to put on a, do a, a React video for YouTube, I go on my website, I scroll down, I see something that picks my, tickles my fancy, that catches my eye, and I mm -hmm. click on it. And usually, um, usually I just, uh, you know, um, usually it works. Uh, yep. Usually it's, it, it's a pretty common progression. I'm pretty warmed up. My ear is, is you know, somewhat warmed up. Um, and usually it's fine. Every now and again, I completely, you know, crap the bed, but I post it anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then I, after that, I usually uh, edit it, and then it takes 20 minutes to render. And so I usually shoot to do that um, during lunchtime for the kids. And I go mm -hmm. upstairs, try to have lunch with them, come back down, upload it, do all the social media stuff. Um, and then I usually have maybe an hour left before they get out of school, which is by three. Okay. And once 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 they're done, uh, it's game over. Yeah, because, yeah, right, yeah. Because because they're in the house and I'm in the house. Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. Wake okay. up, yeah. Wake up, work out, get the kids in school, do my guitar workouts, um, go on my you know customer service on the website, mm -hmm. then. Then uh, you know, try to film a video that day. And most of the time, it's YouTube videos, but once a week, it's for my website. Yeah. Uh, have lunch with the kids, come back down, render it, upload it, do all the things, you know. Uh, and then it's usually just like stuff like this afterwards, you know, around right. three, yeah, yeah, two yeah. or three or so. Mm -hmm. um, I try to schedule these things. Um, and then once they're out of school, I go upstairs and, and, and I'm dead till, uh, you know, the kids go around or go to sleep at seven or eight or so. And then, mm -hmm. and then, uh, Tuesday nights I do all my YouTube lives. And then Thursday nights, my wife, my wife and I try to have date night and the other two, I try to actually go to bed and that's pretty much it. Pretty awesome. domesticated. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. I, I is yours, curious. is yours similar? It's pretty similar. Yeah. Um, I usually, um, I'm kind of in a switch right now, but I'll tell you the regular one. Typically, the first Monday of every month, I'll have like a YouTube brainstorming session where I have like a Google Drive mm -hmm. and I plan all my titles for the next month. So what I'm filming this month in January will be for uh, at this point, March. So right. I'm like on the rotation like that. But yeah, first Monday of every month, I'll plan all the videos. Along with each video, I will have like a a call to action in the video. So if I want to send someone to the website to download something or so mm -hmm. I plan all that. And then the first Tuesday of the month, that's where I film all the videos uh, it, you, in an ideal day. But typically it takes wait, a little wait, bit longer. Wait, 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 say that again. So every the first Monday of the month, I plan all the titles and stuff. Yes. All the backing tracks. The first you Tuesday the of the month. plan the whole month in advance. Yeah, yeah. 
And the I'm, first Tuesday of the month, I'll film everything for the following month. And then uh, my brother is editing my videos now, so I'll send all that to him. He that's edits. Awesome. Yeah. He, uh, he uploads them, schedules them, and he goes by the, the Google Calendar, the, the, the document that I have, so he knows what kind of card to attach to a video, what I'm kind of end screen. I'm blown away by your organization and execution. I, I had to, but that's ideally. I, I don't yeah, always right, follow right, right. it. I get that, I get that. But um, I get very anxious if I'm not organized like this. And I've went you know, months and even years without that, yeah, and I was getting depressed and just very, very anxious. Yeah, I, 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 um, I, I get it. I, I mean, that's yeah. why that's why I put the guitar down for like five or six months in 2019. I was right, totally, yeah. totally burned out because you just you got to have a plan. It's 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 that's um, there's a flip side to anyone who wants to do this as a career. There's a dark side to YouTube and social media because it can be a very lonely job. A very uh, pressure-driven job, and that's all mental games, but I don't know about you, but I've struggled on and off with comparing with other guys, and, and jealousy creeps in, all those Always. nasty things. Regardless of how nice of a person you are, I think you're inclined to str have those struggles sometimes. No, I mean, I think it's just part of the human condition, but in this, it is, yeah. Yeah. In this world where, you know, one, we don't actually know anybody in person where mm -hmm. we live that does yeah. what we do and that understands what we do. And then two, we spend our whole day in front of computers and cameras talking when no one talks back. Yeah. Um, and you measure yourself based on comments and metrics. And as good as they can be one day, week, month, or year, you get one terrible day or one terrible comment. It takes you days mm -hmm. to recover. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's true. Yeah, it yeah. just it, it crushes your soul. It does. Um, it takes a while to build a callus for that, mm -hmm. um, and and it's just a, it's just a, an endlessly moving target. It's you know this. Yeah. That that even though we've been doing it, you know, I'm eight years. You're what like ten or eleven years ish. Yeah, it's still mm -hmm. like it's still a completely new industry. It's, it it's, is. Yeah. It's, it, it, I don't even think Instagram is that old. Like it's still yeah, I don't think so. so. So new, and think about how different everything was: the mm -hmm. camera, the upload speed, hard drives, everything from when we started. It is yeah. like it is completely different, and every six months it like gets flipped on its head. So it's really this constantly moving target where you constantly have to adapt, mm -hmm. and and so many things there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. Like it only makes sense in hindsight. And yeah. you just kind of like have to keep going on faith. Um, and it's just a, and again, you sit in empty rooms talking yeah. with no one that talks right. back. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and you go upstairs and talk to your family and they, don't, mm -hmm. they can't relate to it. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's, it's so easy to get mm -hmm. caught in that, am I doing this correctly? Am I doing the, all the things? It's a, it's um. It's a, yeah. it's a it's it's a great thing. It is, but it's 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 not without its challenges for sure. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, and and also you know the the one of the biggest gauge you have to know if you're doing well or not in this industry is the numbers. You're looking yeah. at the stats and all that. And yeah. Those are numbers, and I don't know if that ever happened to you, but there was a time where um, I felt. A failure if I didn't have, you know, if I didn't reach this number, whatever it was, like 10,000 views a day or whatever, whatever yeah. the number. Yeah. And you start playing mental tricks like I, I, I will be worth it if this happens. It's never true. So, yeah. But being in this place has helped a lot too. separating yeah. from from home. Uh, now I'm able to leave, you know, my <laughs> my struggles here and go back home and be well, a dad and a husband idea. and. It's helped a lot, so. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's actually one of the main reasons that I wanted to get my own place. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke to our uh, other mutual friend that does what we do, Anthony Stalfer from Texas Blues Alley. Yeah. And I forget the language that he used when I was talking to him about this, but he said something like, um, the creative, like, like the creative energy, like or he said, your creative energy for being a parent and for your and he said, wait, no. 
your 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 intuition. God, he said it so beautifully. He's such a, um, but uh, uh, your your instincts. He said your dad instincts and your business instincts should not compete for mm. the same creative energy. So if you work in your house, mm-hmm. you know, and you're creative, and you hear the crying upstairs or something something drops or like you feel like you are needed, it it completely zaps any flow then of, of, of what you were doing because this is a creative thing we're doing. And yeah. the, the, the opposite's also true. If you're upstairs at dinner trying to plug into your family and you know that the camera and computer is and the guitar is right downstairs and you get a, you get you get an idea mm-hmm. and you're like I ha- I have I have to I have to I have to go right now. I ha- you know yeah. like and, yeah. and it's, it's a constant yeah. competition. Yeah. Um, and that really resonated with me. Yeah. I think I think you made the right move. I'm excited about your yeah. renewed even even um, renewed inspiration for content and cuz you're physically going somewhere and as you're Huge. going driving there or walking Huge. you start getting into that mindset so that's going to be great i'm excited for you yeah man well i hope that one day we can get together soon and you know if mm-hmm. you if you if i ever come out to colorado I'll let you know yeah. if, you ever, if you ever come this way i mean it's uh i always like getting to see you in person man it's you know we all have these virtual relationships but i know yeah nothing's nothing's like getting to hang you know Right. It will happen. We'll do it. Yeah. COVID will end. Yes. Well, uh, this, this, was been, this has been great. I know you have stuff to do. You need to put your dad hat on now, probably. What time is it for you there? It's almost four. I, okay. My wife's texting me. She, I told her I'd be done at four. So this okay, is Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. Well, man, I'm going to do a couple more hours here, and then I'll be a dad myself. But Sounds good, good talking to you. You too, man. Always good to catch up with you. I'm, I'm so glad you pinged me. And... Uh, I gotta have you on my channel sometime soon. Whenever I have, whenever I have guests on, um, we started doing the thing where guests bring like their three or four favorite live YouTube performances. Oh yeah, that's so, awesome. So and so, think about that, and we'll set it. We'll set a date. Uh, we'll set a date this winter. That sounds great, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> All right, brother. Take care. All right, take care. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. All right.